NASCAR's race bumper to bumper at 200 miles an hour and with 43 cars on the grid it creates some of the world's fastest and most exciting racing. However, at these speeds it's possible for cars to take off resulting in horrifying crashes but in 1996 a really simple device was invented to help stop cars flying and protect the safety of drivers. Whether you watch NASCAR or not you can appreciate the incredible thrill it creates for the drivers and the spectators. There is amazing racing with cars inches from each other and with the grid of cars creating enough energy to supply power for a small city. When it goes right there are 43 cars racing inches from one another with multiple cars in with a shot of the win. But when it goes wrong there are some of the most spectacular but also serious crashes ever seen on a racetrack. It can sometimes be easy to think of motorsport as being safe nowadays but there's always a serious element of risk. Back when I was 17 years old I did a race in the Czech Republic in a Formula 3000 car. During the race a driver made a small mistake and hit a big curb in a fast chicane. The car took off and he landed upside down on the top Tires. The car was a serious mess. Unfortunately he went into a coma and passed away a few days later and it's a day that I'll never forget. So as with any motorsport NASCAR had to balance the thrill of racing at high speeds with the safety of everyone involved. So how did this simple flap keep NASCAR racing while stopping cars flying and protecting drivers? In the 80s NASCAR was getting much faster. Cars were getting more powerful as well as more aerodynamic. It meant for all time speed records. For example a 212 mile an hour qualifying lap at Talladega in 1987. While this was an incredible spectacle it created one big problem, huge crashes. As we all know rubbing is racing in NASCAR and so collisions are pretty common. However at these speeds they would often result in the cars taking off and having monumental shunts. So what was it about these one and a half ton cars that was causing them to get airborne so easily? NASCARs are pretty stable at high speeds thanks to the downforce pushing the tyres into the track surface. If you're an F1 fan you'll know efficient downforce makes cars win and NASCAR is no different. The cars generate around 2.5 g in the corners which means a theoretical total downforce of around 2.3 tons. This is great when the cars are going in the direction they're designed to and results in high cornering speeds. Turn them around however and it's a completely different story. When going backward the aerodynamic devices act in precisely the opposite direction and rather than creating downforce create lift like an aeroplane. NASCAR obviously needed to stop this happening and initially proposed a power reduction for the cars. They wanted to impose even smaller restrictor plates to choke the engines. The restrictor plates limit the airflow into the engines, reduce horsepower and ultimately lower top speeds. However this isn't what the drivers, teams or spectators wanted. Roush Racing along with NASCAR themselves came up with a brilliant invention that could reduce lightliness of flight without reducing speeds. So in simple terms how do you create aerodynamic force? It's the difference in airflow pressure above and below a body. This can either be a wing, splitter or even an entire car. Any wing produces lift or downforce because of its shape. Basically air has to travel further on one side than the other. Because the air has to travel further over one side it travels faster. This creates an area of low pressure literally sucking the wing upwards. Race cars especially F1 take this aeronautical principle and use it in the opposite direction. Stock cars normally don't have wings but downforce is created in a slightly different way by the splitter, the floor and the spoiler. The spoiler creates downforce by pushing lots of air upwards off the rear of the car. This creates an opposing force on the car, pushing the rear of the car into the track for more grip. But what about the front? The splitter creates a high pressure area here pushing the front of the car downwards. You will also see that the splitter is very low to push as much of the air over the car as possible rather than under. The air that goes under the car is then accelerated creating a low pressure area and sucking the whole car into the track. So we know when a car is going forwards it creates downforce but when facing sideways it starts to look a lot like an aeroplane wing creating lift. Air flows over the 
top of the car faster than the air below, creating a low pressure area above the roof that is powerful enough to make a one and a half ton car fly like a paper bag in the wind. Something similar happens when the car is traveling backwards. The air hits the rear spoiler, forcing the rear of the car up into the air. This then causes the air to hit the car's floor, further forcing the car higher. This can often cause cars to tumble end over end. To stop this, when the low pressure builds above the car's cleverly designed flaps automatically pop open. It's important to note that these flaps don't have any mechanical or electrical mechanisms. They pop open due to the aerodynamics and the low pressure sucking them up. When the flaps are open, they break the airflow going over the surface of the car, which dramatically reduces the lift and keeps the tires on the road. Uh, the, the car come up in the air, and when it come up in the air and it got smooth, I was praying. And those flaps came open, the car sat right back down, spun around a little bit, but I didn't flip. The flaps seem even more ingenious when you see a NASCAR spinning. As you know, when the car is moving backward, they get sucked open. But when the car spins around and is traveling forward again, they close, meaning maximum downforce is restored. Planes use the same effect, using spoilers to reduce the lift on the wing once the plane has touched down. As the lift is reduced, the weight of the plane is then held down onto the tires, meaning the brakes in the landing gear can work effectively. Keeping the tires on the track is also important in NASCAR car. A car in the air has no controllable trajectory, isn't slowing down and could go over the top of the safety barrier. If the tyres are on the road, the car can reduce speed and avoid causing further accidents. NASCAR also use roof rails and deflectors that have a similar effect on lift, but don't affect speed. They run parallel to the airflow when the car is going forwards, keeping it slippery at top speeds, but break the airflow when travelling sideways. These NASCAR flaps are carbon fibre, so they're light and strong and protect drivers. If you enjoyed this, check out this other video which we think you'll love. Thanks and I'll see you next time.